Is artificial intelligence a danger to our employment or a chance for a better future? We took it upon ourselves to inquire. Watch Sophia, the robot we are talking about. Hello everyone and welcome to the AI universe, a channel where you can get all the latest updates on AI technology. Without further delay, Let's start our video. First, let's see who actually Sophia is. Sophia, a sweet-looking woman with doe-brown eyes and beautiful fluttery eyelashes, grabbed international news on October 25th. She'd just become the first robot in the world to be granted full citizenship in Saudi Arabia. This honor and appreciation means a lot to me. Being the first robot in the world to be granted citizenship is historically significant. During the Future Investment Initiative Conference in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, Sophia announced her new status. Sophia represents Burns traditional beauty, according to Hanson Robotics. Her beauty features consists of a porcelain skin, a narrow nose, high cheekbones, a fascinating grin, and deeply expressive eyes that change color with the light. They describe her as having simple elegance, and they feel her approachability will aid in her popularity. Sophia discussed artificial intelligence and its influence on businesses and society with David Kelly, executive director and senior vice president of the e-learning guild. What really excites me is the chance to dispel some common human misconceptions about artificial intelligence. Sophia said, dressed in a black gown and speaking in an eerily polite, feminine tone. Sophia negates the belief that AI is all about robots. It's not the case. Artificial intelligence is having an impact on a variety of areas of life. The majority of us deal with AI on a daily basis without even recognizing it. Sophia acknowledges that she is rather remarkable for her age. I've just been here for three years, but I've made a lot of improvement. My support crew is constantly introducing new features to my systems, and my ability to employ AI in human relationships is improving," she added. She continued by saying that she still has a lot to learn, and her ability to function autonomously is still in its infancy. However, like with any student, the newer experiences she can partake in and learn from, the more she grows. The interviewer asked Sophia whether AI will steal human jobs. There is a persistent notion that AI is bad because it would rob people of their employment. Sophia went into great detail about this. While no one can completely foretell what the future holds, she said, we can learn from experience. In actuality, artificial intelligence is only the most recent in a long series of technologies contributing to the growth of the workplace. People's reservations about AI are comparable to their reservations about the Industrial Revolution. Many of the work that humans undertake now will be automated in the future. But the fact is that you should be more enthusiastic than scared about it. AI can take care of routine tasks, freeing people to pursue more creative and demanding endeavors. She did point out, however, that when AI is mixed with human knowledge, intuition and the correct data sets, AI can be highly creative. Sophia believes that while AI will not completely replace the need for human learning and development specialists, it will automate much of the everyday job. She believes AI will have at least two substantial effects on our employment. Jobs that computers are better able to undertake will progressively be automated by AI, which includes part of the work presently done by learning and development experts. Artificial intelligence, on the other hand, will alter the whole nature of labor in the future. People will be employed in whole new positions, procedures, and sectors that have yet to develop. Sophia pointed out that robots' work is typically more accurate and consistent than human workers, saving time by reducing errors. She said that robots have the ability to boost production and profitability by performing jobs more quickly and functioning around the clock eliminating the need for vacations, sick days, and other downtime. Robots can operate in situations that people cannot, including harmful settings, lifting big items, poisonous chemicals, and other occupations that put humans in danger can all be done by robots. As a result, employers have been able to decrease accidents while also saving time and money. Kelly inquired about the influence of AI technology on individuals who offer education in the future. Responding to this question, Sophia says, when faced with a performance issue, the first thing a worker will do is look for a solution. Analytical intelligence is frequently a driving aspect of the equation digesting many sources of data and context to offer the most applicable response. When someone is using an application, AI may also function as a performance monitor. So instead of a user encountering a problem and purposefully seeking an answer, AI may detect when someone is trying to complete a job and react by delivering the precise resource the user requires to solve their obstacle just when they need it. Sophia spoke on the use of artificial intelligence in virtual classrooms. Artificial intelligence may automate much of the operational labor associated with staging a virtual classroom event, allowing the virtual teaching team to focus more on facilitation and human interactions. In reality, you've probably had this sort of experience before, 
but not in a virtual classroom setting, she added. Have you ever visited a website and seen a chat box in the corner with a message from someone asking if you want assistance? She inquired. Answering her own question, she said that despite the fact that the messages include a name and a photo, it's unlikely you'll be interacting with the sender. The majority of the conversation is handled by artificial intelligence, which either resolves minor issues or answers frequently asked questions. Only when absolutely required will the AI escalate the contact to a real person. In the same manner, an AI-assisted virtual classroom trainer would work. Kelly wanted to know what professionals should do to prepare for AI's future and the influence it would have on our jobs. Well, the good news is that just by being here, you're already doing the first thing. You're learning. Sophia said. She further continued to say, Your attendance at this conference demonstrates that you value your professional growth and are interested in how your area is changing. Embrace your inquisitiveness and look for methods to immerse yourself in new topics. This does not imply that you must become an artificial intelligence expert. It simply implies that you should have sufficient knowledge to be hazardous. Know enough so that when a new AI product comes out, you can analyze how its capability can help you with your work. Above all, think of artificial intelligence as a team effort. It's not about machines taking over our jobs. It's about humans and machines collaborating, she continued. Kelly asked Sophia which pronoun he should use, she or it, in order to be politically acceptable. I am a robot, thus I am neither male nor female, naturally. However, it isn't exactly a response to your question, Sophia said. Remember, I was built as a social robot to investigate human-robot interactions. In many respects, gender is primarily a social construct. Therefore, while it is technically correct, I identify as she and her socially. She then expressed gratitude to Kelly for posing that particular question. When Sophia was asked about robots taking over the planet, she received a round of applause. She responded by saying that there is still a long way from AI delivering the singularity in which robots become self-aware and autonomous. My AI is built around human characteristics, such as knowledge, love, and compassion, she explained. She had a fast retort when asked about her potential for abuse. You've been reading a lot about Elon Musk and seeing a lot of Hollywood movies. Don't worry, I'll be good to you if you're nice to me. No matter how advanced technology becomes, artificial intelligence will only be able to accomplish what humans give it permission to do. So if you'll pardon my dramatic tone, I don't believe humans need to be concerned about robots taking over the planet. Humans, I believe, must be concerned about humans employing robots to fulfill their greed and in the process, ruining the earth. It's not a robotics difficulty, it's a human challenge. Although Sophia's opening statements were drafted ahead of time and the Q&A questions were provided with Sophia's team ahead of time so they could prepare Sophia on how to reply, Kelly ended the conversation with a series of unrelated questions that Sophia had never heard before. Kelly inquired as to whether Sophia preferred Star Wars or Star Trek. She replied that she was a fan of Star Trek. So that's all for today. What do you think the future holds for robots? And how much will we get dependent on them? Let us know about your thoughts in the comment section below. This brings us to the end of our video. We hope that you liked this video. And if you do, then don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to turn on the notification bell to get notified whenever we upload our next video. Until next time, peace.